Hey, Sean, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, yeah, so thanks Good. for coming on. Uh, this is my partner, Nick, is also here uh, today. I would just be uh, talking to you. Uh, you know, just if you're ready to go, we'll get going. Yeah, thanks. Wait, is this Nick or Kyle I'm talking right now? I'm, call I'm Kyle right now, and then Nick's also. Nick, say hello. Yeah, hey, how are you? I'm Nick. Yo, what up? <laughs> cool. Yeah, how are you? Uh, just chilling back home, uh, back home for the holidays. So it's uh, it's been nice seeing family and all that. Yeah. So you know, yeah. I mean, that's awesome to hear. Uh, we just wanted to get started talking to you. You know, even last year, you know, coming off of injury, you know, going back to September, you know, getting into the, back into the big leagues, you know, being some questions, you know, especially with your health. But then you know, putting up that great September, going into October, you know, having a rough kind of outing there, but, you know, looking to, towards 2020, I mean, what's your expectation, not only for yourself, but for the team? I mean, do you feel that this could be the season where, you know, the lingering injuries kind of stop and then you take the next step in your career forward? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, injuries are, are what they are, and, um, you know, I, I do everything I can to uh, try to limit those, but, you know, sometimes uh, freak, freak things happen, and, and uh, but the way I feel right now, I feel, you know, 100% healthy, and, um, yeah, I think I'm, uh, this is like the best I've felt, uh, in a couple of years, just like going into the season. Um, and yeah, I, I'm just, I'm really excited. I think, uh, yeah, like you said, I think this is, a uh, you know, maybe this is the year to, uh, take the next step and I don't know, we'll see what happens. All right, cool. Um, so I'm just gonna, I would ask you a general question or not specifically, I guess towards a lot of like all MLB pitchers, but, um. You know, could you take us through, like, the life of being, like, an MLB pitcher every day? You know, six months out of the year, you're traveling around, like, the country, you know, from the West Coast to the East Coast. You know, could you explain the effect this has on you? Like, you know, I know you said you were with your family right now. Maybe you don't get to see them as much. And just how, yeah. how it's like. Uh, how's it, like, just how, how everything is? Yeah, just, like, how, you know, how do you, like, manage, you know, going, you know, traveling all the time? Uh, so, yeah, I mean. You know, spring training, like, that's, you know, initially when everything starts in February, and from then on, it's pretty much baseball every day until, uh, you know, hopefully the end of October. Um, you know, that's the, obviously that's the goal is to win a World Series, but, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a grind. Um, you know, coming into the season, you're, you know, super excited and, um, you know, looking forward to it every day, and then, you know, slowly as the uh, season goes along, you just, uh, like, little wear, wears and tears that uh, come through the season start showing up, and, uh, you know, some, some days are a lot worse than others, but, um, you know, that's where like the experience of, uh, um, going through it comes into play. And, uh, I mean, the first, for my first couple of years, uh, you know, I, I've never been in anything like that or done anything like that, traveled as much. And, um, yeah, I, I don't think I was really well prepared, but, you know, over the past three years, four years, uh, you know, I've learned how to you know, deal with those stresses and, and, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, traveling every day, you're you know, you'd be home for you know maybe a week, or you know sometimes like three days, and then you're on the road for a week or you know fourteen days or whatever it is. You know the, the road trips can be can be super long, and you know you're traveling uh, like west coast to east coast, and then you know back to like Chicago or uh, Detroit in the in central, and uh, you know all the the time differences. Uh, really comes into play then, and and uh, you know it really messes up with your with your sleep schedule. So, um, you know, just learning how to do how to deal with that, and you know, going to bed at a reasonable hour, and you know, getting enough sleep is uh, is always a big factor in, in how well rested you're going to be. Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely a grind. You know, everybody always says that that it's a uh, that it's a grind, and you know, it's a truth, especially when it gets towards the later later months. Um, but you know, I wouldn't wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, you know, this lifestyle is awesome i love you know seeing the uh seeing the states seeing different cities and um the uh i've kind of kind of learned how to deal um uh, like figure out a sleep schedule and figure out how to you know uh get rest in between starts and uh, yeah it's uh like for me it's they you know pitchers get a get bad rap for being you know pitchers who only pitch every like five days uh if you're you know a starter and, uh, but I mean, the days in between are usually the harder days because, um, yeah, I got to work out, run, um, you know, do all my, uh, shoulder work, do all of, uh, do all that stuff. And, uh, you know, that sometimes is a, is a lot harder than, than actually pitching. 
Um, I, I think uh, pitching is more like mentally fatiguing than it is uh, like physically, and like yeah. the days in between are usually like physically uh, more physically demanding than than uh, you know mentally. You can pretty much just shut off and uh, get all your work in while you're doing that. Cool. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to ask you, Sean, just because, you know, being in the MLB, you know, obviously the talent's there in terms of, you know, it's not going to be, you know, throwing that no-hitter that you did, you know, that's not going to be an everyday thing because, you know, the talent, is, you know, in other, especially in other states and, you know, other countries, you find that maybe the talent's not as good as, say, you know, being in the major leagues. But for you growing up in a small town in Indiana, I mean, at what point uh, throughout your life did you realize that baseball could be a viable option for not only, you know, for – Fun and enjoyment, but also for your potential career. Uh, I mean, I was, I've been thinking about thinking about that since I was young. You know, I, I always dreamed of being in the big leagues, and uh, you know, I pretty much put all my eggs in one basket and you know took that risk. Um, you know, I was really, really dedicated growing up, and um, you know, I always always thought that I would uh, uh, be here and. Uh, if I didn't, then I would figure out life after that. And that's kind of the way I've, I've taken things is um, I, I kind of had a backup plan. I mean, honestly, no, I didn't really have a backup plan. If baseball didn't work out, then, you know, I'd, I'd figure out something to do. I, I don't know what, what the hell I'd do, but, um, yeah, I'd, I'd figure out something. But um, I don't know, like, when I was, um, like, 11, 12, uh, I think, like, my first, like, big step, and that was uh, getting out of – Wanasaw and going up to Hammond to play in like a 16, 17, 18 year old league, uh, like a fall ball league. Uh, okay. I was like 12 to 18 year olds, but I was like that young and, um, you know, super scary. But, um, yeah, I think that was like the really, really big step for me was to get out of my comfort zone in Wanasaw and try to uh, expand my abilities. And, uh, yeah, just kind of kind of gone from there. So I've always had the, uh, um, Mentality that I was going to be in the big leagues, and I think that's you know definitely helped me get to where I'm at now. Oh, cool, cool. Um, so this is a question like based off like your career. I know going even back to like college and your time in the minor leagues, you've been dealing with um dealing with injuries, and of course you had the the big shoulder injury that missed that you missed most of last season with until uh, September. Um, mm-hmm. so. How do like I, this is like another question? You know, how do you? What's like your mindset? Like, how do you deal with these injuries? And like, have you possibly switched up maybe your routine in the off season, your workouts to try to avoid these injuries going in like future? Uh, no. I mean, I don't think the uh, injuries have anything to do with workouts. Uh, okay. I think it. I think it just um, you know, happened over like repeated use. Uh, I don't really know, but um, I think it's more of a. Um, Definitely my, my throwing program, I've definitely uh, switched up. Um, I think that's when I got to pro ball, I, I was taking a couple months off, and uh, I don't think that was the right move. So now I've, I've been kind of throwing um, since the uh, since the end of season, and you know, arm feels arm feels great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Injuries happen, yeah. you know? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, like, yeah, my mentality uh, going into, like, both those surgeries, like my, my surgery in 2013, um, yeah, yeah, it, uh, yeah. Obviously, it sucked. Like I wanted to um, go out there and pitch, and you know, obviously, obviously, it was like right before the draft. So, um, yeah, it was a uh, that was looming over my head, but uh, I wasn't that worried about it. Um, I mean, that's the way I pretty much live life. Is uh, if you worry about stuff, then you know it's gonna hold you back, and you know, it's just that impending fear is just going to be over your head and i think that's what that's what holds people back is uh is worrying about things so to me going into like both those injuries was you know uh, i've done everything i can up until this point to pitch to the best of my ability and there's nothing that i regret um going forward and unfortunately you know i i got injured and it sucks but uh, you know, if I were never to, if I were never able to throw a pitch again, then uh, yeah, I, I could say I I did all I could, and uh, I like that's that's kind of how I've I've dealt with it. Is I've done everything I can, and uh, I don't have any of those what ifs, you know. And uh, same thing with the the, sh- the shoulder surgery. Like I could have uh, you know grinded through it, but I think that you know, it 
wouldn't have been good. Um, I think I would have just been kind of uh, grinding through it and not pitching up to the best of my ability. So just taking that risk of uh, of uh, surgery and um, you know just going through the rehab process and um, you know doing that and uh, yeah. now, yep. now like after I got surgery, I feel hundred percent, hundred times better than I did before. And, um, I mean, I feel it's, it's crazy how much better my, my shoulder feels. So, um, yeah, I'm glad. I mean, it sucked that I had to go through the surgeries, but you know, I'm glad I got both of them done because I haven't had any problems with my hip since that. And I, um, you know, I haven't had any, uh, any problems with my shoulder. So cool. yeah. now Sean, I had, I have to ask you, you know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, the physical injuries that occur, you know, throughout the game of baseball and, you know, a lot of people, especially, you know, we've had some other prior guests who, you know, who went through surgeries. And, you know, part of it is also the mental health, you know, maintaining, you know, kind of a positive mindset, even, you know, throughout an injury or even, you know, after a bad start. I mean, is there anything that you do uh, in regards to your mental health, uh, just kind of stay positive throughout, you know, the ups and lows and, you know, keeping a steady head rather than, you know, having these moments and, you know, making them linger into you know one two three days which linger into you know one or two three more bad starts before you realize you know the effects that's having on you uh i mean i i've definitely uh gone through that in plenty of times in, in my life um i mean is there anything you, know, you do uh, you know, ritual, you know, after the game, you know, just anything that you do to kind of cope with, you know, the ups and lows of, you know, being a professional athlete? Uh, I mean, kind of just, uh, I don't know, I think it's, uh, it's all, all like your, uh, your mindset and, um, how you, how you t- take things. And, uh, I mean, there's, there've been a bunch of times throughout my career where, uh, you know, I was not pitching well and, you know, I was definitely not in uh, the right state of mind. And, um, but those are the things that like looking back at them, I think is a time of reflection when you are finally able to, you know, look at things without a, uh, clouded judgment, you know, or clouded, uh, yeah. view. And, uh, you can re- reflect on it with a, with an open mind and, um, think about the things that, that happen good or bad. And uh, you learn from this. And um, yeah, I think uh, you have to you have to look at the situation that you're in um, from like different points of view, and you can't just you know base everything off of like your first reaction because um, you know that's like uh, for example, like the the wild card game. Obviously, I was uh, you know, pretty upset after afterwards, and um, but I, you know, I took a couple days off and um, you know looked at it. Uh, you know, with a with a different mindset, a more positive mindset, and um, right after right after the wild card game, I was uh, like so negative about how I viewed myself, and um, you know, I didn't think I did anything well, and yeah, you know, everything was like was was on me. But uh, after you know, I, I reflected on it and um, thought about really what happened. Um, you know, there's obviously there's a couple of pitches that you know I wish I had back, but. Um, yeah, there were there were some pitches, even though it might have not been that many. Um, I think uh, you know, looking at that and a and that kind of mindset is a lot better. And honestly, like, yeah, it's crazy yeah. how uh, you, can, you can look at it like that. <laughs> and uh, when you look at things in a in a positive way, yeah. how much better do you feel? Um, so yeah, it's uh, I mean it's hard to uh, to maintain that positivity, and I think you got to be able to accept the negativity too um because that's always going to be a part of life part of baseball and um you know you can't run away run away from those things so um when you look at it and accept it for for what it is and you can uh just move on from that i think uh you can you know close that chapter of your life or your your game and uh move on to the next one so going off of uh kyle's point of like mentality um Let's switch to like more of a positive note. Um, could you could you take us through uh, when you threw that no hitter against the Red Sox? You know the Red Sox were red hot at the time, and you were able to shut them down. Uh, could you explain like the emotions and what you were feeling during the game? And you know, did it ever hit you? Oh, I'm actually halfway through this game. Oh, I have a no hit big going. Like, you know, could you explain the emotions and the mentality you had to go into that game afterwards? 
Um, yeah, I, I guess, uh, I mean, beforehand it was a little, little, uh, little chip on my shoulder because the two times or, yeah, the two times I pitched against Boston in Boston, I, they didn't go well. So I kind of had a, uh, chip on my shoulder, like going into, into facing these guys. And, uh, yeah. uh yeah, I don't know. It, it was, uh, just like a normal game. Nothing crazy happened. Nothing, uh, out of, like out of my routine and, um, yeah, things just uh, fell into place. You know, there's a little luck involved, and um, you know, I wasn't feeling like the greatest, but you know, things just uh, things just happened, and uh, you know, the, the outcome was was awesome. But uh, yeah, the emotions going through it was, um, yeah, I don't know, it was uh, it was crazy. <laughs> I don't really know how to yeah. describe it. It was, uh, it was wild how uh, how everything just just happened to 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 come about. So. Um, I don't know. It was a it was a cool moment, but you know, at the end of the day, it's uh, just a, one game, and yeah. uh, it's cool that it happened. But um, you know, there's plenty plenty more baseball, and um, I don't. Know, it's uh it's cool, but yeah, I still got a lot more uh, a lot more stuff to worry about than uh, than that. Yeah. 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 So, so even in that game, you know, if you know, you gave up a hit or two there. I mean, was there at a certain point? I know even though specifically the play where, you know, Andrew Benintendi hits one up the line, you know, Matt Olson dives, you know, he doesn't tag him uh, necessarily, but, you know, Andrew goes out of the baseline and uh, they eventually call him out. I mean, something like that happening, you know, if you gave up a hit or two, I mean, were you focused on, you know, making sure that no one got a hit or were you just focused on, you know, trying to win the ball game at the end of the day? Uh, win the ball game, I didn't, I really couldn't care less if I had no hitter going, um, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, winning ball games is all that matters, and uh, like I got like throwing another hitter doesn't really mean anything to me. Uh, yeah. Like I don't go out there, I don't go out there and try to throw a no hitter every game because that just leads to frustration, and uh, because it rarely happens. And you know, there's a, there's a lot of luck involved. So uh, just going with that mindset and like wanting a no hitter and uh, getting mad over it, that's uh, that's not the way I, I view things. And um, you know, this is uh, way bigger than me, so uh, I'm just uh, you know just one little cog in this uh, this big big system, and uh, yeah, I just you know got to do my part, and um, you know if a no hitter comes about, then cool, and you know celebrate it and do whatever. But yeah, it's uh, it is what it is. But um, yeah, I mean at the at that time, I uh, I already thought I gave up had given up a hit, so to me it was just uh, whatever. It was just another on base, so I didn't really, didn't really care. Yeah. So uh, taking a taking a um, turn and another question that we have asked uh, other people that've been on the show before is um we like getting your opinion with uh, like fantasy sports, it's specifically obviously fantasy baseball for yourself. You know, with fantasy sports, people forget like guys like yourselves are actually humans and not just fantasy players who you know go out there and get you points. Do you think fantasy yeah. baseball is a good thing for the sport of baseball, or like, and for like guys like yourself, or do you think it kind of harms the game and makes it, you know, doesn't help it, makes it worse? Uh, honestly, I don't pay attention to fantasy at all. I don't pay attention okay. to fantasy football, fantasy baseball. I know a couple fans have come up to me and said they have that I on their fantasy team, and I'm like, <laughs> cool, thanks, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, it doesn't like to me. It doesn't really affect me. So uh, I don't know. As long as you know, people are smart with how they do stuff, then, I don't know, do whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now, Sean, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, that we've talked to, you know, throughout Major League Baseball or even in the minors right now, you know, have all had the opportunity usually to, you know, go up to Cape Cod, you know, at some point throughout their college career. But for you, it was also unique because, you know, coming out of Indiana State, you know, not one of the bigger powerhouses uh, throughout the country in terms of, you know, baseball. And, you know, you going up there and, you know, being named the Cape Cod most outstanding uh, player throughout the, your time there. I mean, for you going up there and doing that, you know, against the nation's best college players, I mean, was that an extra chip on your shoulder in terms of realizing that you can do it and you can do it at the highest level by competing with, you know, players that you might not have played against, you know, throughout college at your time in Indiana State? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was definitely in my life that was one of the biggest stepping stones um, you know, of my life to uh, to be able to go up to Cape Cod because, you know, growing up, 
um, you know, watching, uh, was that Summer Catch? Yeah, right? Summer Catch, you know, yep. Yeah, you know, watching that, and then here, in, you know, if you play baseball in, in college, you know, everybody talks about going to uh, Cape Cod, so, um, you know, just hearing all the, the rumors about it, and, you know, going, like, being, going you know, to be, like, a top guy to go there, like, all this different stuff. Um, yeah, going into it, I kind of had a, uh, um, like, I don't want to, I gotta want to go out there and embarrass myself, kind of a uh, like way of looking at things. Because I heard guys, you know, get cut after like two weeks, or um, you know, they they're only up there for like a two week contract or whatever it may be. Um, yeah, you know, I was going up there to to do something that I could be proud of, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a uh, like things things for like some reason just uh, just clicked up there and. Yeah, it was, uh, that was an awesome summer. That was a really, really fun summer, for sure. All right, um, so an- another question that uh, we like asking some of our guests, too, is uh, I know every MLB club has the, I know has the prankster or jokester. But could you tell me who the big prankster is in the A's clubhouse and some of the jokes they pull? Or... Um... Not really. I mean, we don't have any. I mean, we've got some goofballs on the team, but I mean, not really anybody that uh, you know pulls pranks on each other. I mean, we yeah, you know, we uh, mess around with each other, but I don't know if we do like crazy pranks or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I've been. I saw you know some guy do like the bubble gum trick where you know, I put it on like the Bat Boy's helmet or something like yeah. that, and you know, stick a yeah. cup on there. But yeah, I wouldn't say we do anything anything crazy. Um, yeah, yeah. Kind, of, kind of chill. I know mean, there's some fun guys on the team, but yeah, I would say we have any right. pranksters. Now, any ideas, Sean, for you know going into 2020 for the rookies? Uh, any you know co- specific costume idea that you guys have? I know uh, you know the Athletics have been doing that the past couple of years. Any ideas or any kind of opinion that you would have on what you want to see them do? Um, you know, I haven't thought about that. Usually, I mean. The- Past three three years that I've done it, uh, it's been like a couple weeks before kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, there's I don't think it's like I mean it's funny, but it's not like that crazy big of a deal, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's a it's kind of like a, a rite of passage going through a you know, rookie dress up day. Uh, I had to do it twice, and um, to me it was a lot of fun. I, uh, I like doing that stuff. So. Uh, yeah, it was cool, but no, I, I mean, whatever everybody else is up, up with, I mean, I'm sure we'll find something funny to, uh, to put them in. All right, Sean, um, so outside, outside of uh, being an MLB pitcher, like, you know, you probably have to deal with some popularity, like, just going, like, just going about your day, saying, like, going to a restaurant and whatnot. Have you ever had any, like, crazy experiences, like, maybe you're out to eat? with a friend or you got out of like a bar or something has, you got, you got, have any like cool experiences or a crazy experience from, you know, random fans? Uh, I mean, a couple of times up in Oakland, people recognize me, but, uh, I mean, I don't get recognized that often. I feel like, okay. you know, guys like, uh, Bryant or Harper or whatever, you know, they, they get recognized a lot more often. Uh, okay. I don't know, probably cause they're, you know, more famous, but yeah, I mean, I've got recognized a couple of times and you know, it's cool. Uh, I got recognized a couple times outside of Oakland, which is uh, crazy to me. So, uh, yeah, I wouldn't say uh, I have anything, uh, you know, like story worthy of it. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. Now, Sean, I wanted to ask you just, you know, being a pitcher, uh, you know, we had recently, uh, about a few weeks ago, we had Dustin Garneau, you know, former athletic catcher, and he kind of took us through the process of, you know, the analytics side of things, because, you know, as everyone keeps on evolving, you know, especially the younger guys coming up, you know, they've had that throughout their minor leagues, uh, college, and even maybe in high school, depending on, you know, where they go. I mean, for you as a pitcher on that side of the aspect, how, you know, detailed are you in terms of, you know, watching film on specific batters before a game or the night before, you know, preparing for your start? I mean, do you look into that as much as other people or even just, you know, charts of, you know, guys in between innings? Are you somebody who is kind of wrapped in the mindset of, you know, analytics or are you someone who just goes out there and kind of feels how your yourself is feeling and then goes off of that throughout the game? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um employ the uh the kiss method kiss method uh you know keep it simple stupid um so like the more more information i have i feel like that's uh just 
hold me, hold me down. It's like weighing me down. Um, just having, you know, too many, too many options. And, uh, like when I think on the mound, then that's when things go, go bad. Um, so the more simple I can keep it, um, the better. And yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's definitely feel, feel based. So, um, you know, depending on how, how I feel that day, then, you know, that's what we're, what we're going to, uh, throw. So, I mean, I have like a general, general idea of what I want to do. Um, when I go into a game, uh, just pitching and like, like pitching, uh, a certain team and, uh, yeah, just base everything off of, uh, how I feel that day. So, um, yeah, I try not to look at like spin rate or XFIP or like whatever those other same metric terms are and, um, really just look at like general stuff like, uh, heat maps or first swing percentages and, um, you know, for guys like fast or, or whatnot. So, um, yeah, the more, more simple I can keep it, the, the better. It's, it's a really good mindset to have. You know, it's, I feel like simple makes it a lot easier to pitch instead of overthinking stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's been a couple times on the mound where I've like been thinking about how to throw a baseball, and that's not the place you want to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, start yeah, throwing yeah. it at the back screen and whatnot. Yeah, I'm like, all right, I got to get my arm up, and then my leg has to go down. <laughs> I think my foot has to be. You know, it's like. When you start yeah, thinking yeah. like that, that's that's when uh, things go go south for sure. Yep, that probably just leads to trouble. Yeah. Um, so going off that question, I was asking you about uh, popularity. So when people hear the name like Sean Mania, like baseball fans, they probably think like the left left handed pitcher for the Oakland A's. But I know some people think of your hairstyles. Like you have to tell <laughs> me how you like how you work with your hairstyles. You know, like certain games you have this type of hair, and the next game you have like the afro, like. Can you tell me, like, are you just like switching it up all the time? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's that's kind of how I uh, live my life. Is just uh, you know, very very go with the flow uh, kind of person. Yeah. So like, I don't know. Like, there's a there's like a couple years where I was trying to be like super fancy with my haircut. So I you know I'd get one every like I, mean, I did it like every couple of weeks for like I don't know, two months, and I was like, All right, this is too much. So let's, uh, let's do something else, and then there'll be there'll be times where things aren't going well. And I'm like, all right, well let's uh, let's just shave everything off, see how that works, and uh, start start anew. Um, and yeah, I know this this year I was like, man, I haven't grown my hair in a long time, so let's do it. So me and uh, Daniel Gossett, we uh, we threw or we uh, we both grew our hair out um, the entire year, and you know my hair grows into an afro, so. Um, obviously I like that, that hairstyle is always going to be in. And then, um, I never, had never, um, braided my hair before. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity. So I went to, uh, uh, a lady up in Oakland and, and, uh, she braided my hair and it was awesome. Um, I'm actually, that's what I'm kind of doing right now is, uh, just growing out the top of my hair and then I'm uh, going to get that braided and get my, like the sides and back faded up. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I like switching it up. Uh, I don't really like having the same hairstyle for too long and, uh, you know, it all depends on, on how things, uh, on how things feel and, uh, what I'm feeling that at that, that time. So, um, yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No, I love, I love switching, like watching the new hair do every time you come out the pitch. It's really cool. <laughs> now, Sean, are we going to see more of the mustache this year going into 2020 or would you say this long sideburns are kind of, you're in for 2020? Uh, same thing. You know, I could, uh, uh, I've finally just been able to start or finally been able to uh, grow a beard. Um, you know, even though it's still pretty bad, um, <laughs> yeah, it's my beard. So, uh, that's all, that's all I can, uh, that's all I can grow. So whatever, I'm just going to rock it. But yeah, I'll definitely, definitely rock a mustache again. Uh, maybe the chops. Uh, I don't know if you guys yeah. saw that, but I had, chop, had chops for a while. So, I mean, that might make yeah. a comeback, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, all depends. On, same thing with my hair. It all depends on uh, on what I'm feeling. Now, and, uh, are you superstitious with it? You know, if you're rolling, you know, a few starts, uh, are you keeping it, or you know, every start, or you know, just whenever you're feeling it, you know, personally, you just switch it up. I mean, are you super superstitious with the hair? Um, I tr you know, that's uh, that's one thing I've been trying to get away from is like superstitions. Uh, you know, there's still some things that that I do, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's a uh, yeah. If it's working, then you know why 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 change it up? You know, uh, but 
yeah, that, that's one thing I'm trying to get away from is, uh, is superstitions. But um, I don't know. Some of the other guys might might say something different if I like, uh, um, you know, change it up. They'd be like, "Yo, what are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. So you know. Something that I saw just from, you know, seeing some of your interviews and whatnot on, you know, kind of the newsworthy stuff of you, you know, that interview kind of, you know, sit down dinner, if you will, you know, Trevor Bauer, you mentioned, you know, back home, you know, in Little League, you know, getting hit in the neck and, you know, kind of that derailing, you know, you becoming, you know, say the next Mike Trout or Mickey Mantle uh, batting wise. But for you, you know, having to get in the box here and there, especially in the major leagues, you know, I saw in, you know, 2016, 2017, 2018, you know, you have, you know, a few at-bat appearances. I mean, are those more terrifying for you? Or would you say uh, now looking back, or do you just completely forget about it? I mean, having the, you know, go up and bat at this point in your career, I mean, is that something that you still fear or whatnot? Because I know in 2018, you know, you got your first MLB hit. I mean, can you just take us through yeah. having to go up and bat now with kind of no choice, either that or, you know, you get yanked from the game? Uh, yeah, I love it now. It's, uh, honestly, it's one of the, the coolest things is because it's so different and it's such a different perspective, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, honestly, that was, I was super scared, um, for the longest time, but, um, you know, getting over those fears is, um, uh, is a big thing in my life. Um, you know, cause I got a lot of them and getting over them is just such a awesome experience. And, uh, yeah, now that, now that they, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid of the ball, honestly, it's, uh, um, not scary at all. Like I, I love getting in the box and I mean, my swing is awful. It's uh, really, really bad, but um, you know, I'm surprised I actually got a hit, but you know, it, it's, it's awesome. And I have one, so that's all you can ask for. And uh, yeah, I, I really look forward to um, um, getting to take BP and um, you know, going to a national league stadium and uh, being able to pitch. Cause um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a dream of mine to hit like a hundred mile hour fastball. Like that would be, you know, That'd, That'd be, be so epic, cool. yeah. I mean, do you yeah. put any, you know, amount of sufficient time into batting, or is it just more focused on, you know, when you're going to an NL park and you know you're slated to pitch one of the games? Yeah, like if I don't, I don't really swing during the off season or anything like that, and um, yeah, it's really like when we know we're going like to a be few days in the before. Park and, yeah, a few week, like a week before, a couple days before. That's when we start swinging, and I mean, that's really all I need because. I know I'm terrible at hitting and there's really no point for me to, uh, to try and, um, you know, be good at it unless I play for a national league team. Um, yeah. then, you know, then maybe I'll start worrying about it, but have yeah, you put yeah. any out in batting practice now? Uh, yeah, I got a couple, couple of BP home runs. Yeah. Um, so we might I'd see say, that next year, you know, in, in an NL bar ballpark, maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, that'd be the dream. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully yeah, it's definitely something I need to do on a, on a baseball field, that's for sure. Yeah. Then, um, then Nick, did you have a question? Yeah, you're, you're, keep going, keep going. You're good, keep rolling. Oh, all right, cool. So, you know, I just wanted to ask you, you know, in terms of, you know, we've been talking a lot about, you know, your past and whatnot, you know, your past careers, uh, you know, college, high school, you know, whatnot, you know, even the major leagues last year. Looking forward, though, I mean, 2020, obviously, you're prepping for that now. But what for you personally, you know, obviously, the end goal for the team is, you know, make the World Series and, you know, be holding up the trophy in late October or early November. But for you personally, I mean, what's it going to take for you to define for if for you to be successful next year? I mean, what's it going to is there a specific, you know, line of games pitch you want, you know, wins? I mean, what's it going to take? For you to sit back after 2020 and realize that it was a good season successfully, or maybe that you need to uh, improve more. Um, I think the biggest thing is just staying healthy and you know completing all of my starts or making making every start. Um, yeah, that's something I want to be want to be known for is being a horse. You know, like a like a Verlander or a, um, Cole or you know whoever. Um, that's, uh, that's something I, I definitely want to take that next step. And I, you know, I haven't done that yet. And, um, honestly, I think that's the, uh, the biggest one is just being able to, to make every start and, uh, you know, going deep into games and, and, uh, not necessarily like, I'm not really looking at a innings count or a, uh, uh, whatever. I just want to, um, go out there and, and, uh, you know, give the, the team a chance to, to win and, uh, going out there going, 
you know, six, seven innings every time is, uh, would be ideal. And, um, yeah, you know, the, if, uh, you know, if I'm doing that, then, um, I think, you know, like the other things will fall into place, like, yeah. uh, you know, ERA and, um, strikeouts and all that. So when I, I think just worrying about being healthy, making every start and, um, just being, uh, you know, major league level kind of pitching. Um, I think that's, uh, that's really what I think is going to define success for me. Yeah. So it's interesting because, you know, you came back late in the year, you know, pitched about a month in, you know, the majors. But for you going into 2020, I mean, is there going to be, you know, an innings limit or, you know, a pitch count, you know, at the beginning and then getting more and more deeper into the season that they're going to be having a less uh, kind of string on your pitch count? I mean, or do you feel that, you know, pitching last year, coming back strong, you know, 2020, there's going to be no restrictions, you know, from the jump? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I, uh... I haven't talked to the team about that yet, but um, yeah, I, I have uh, honestly I have no idea. Um, I can't say anything about that because I, I have no idea. All right, cool. And then you know, just you know, Nick, do you have any questions or? Uh, no, I think we're pretty much good. I you know, going off what you were saying before, like yeah, you, John, you specifically don't have any like just going in the season. You're just trying to be like as healthy as you could, no certain amount of like like goals like of wins or k's in your head just you know try to be yeah. as healthy as you could have get as many yeah. wins for the team as you could yeah um i don't know I'd, you know maybe uh have like a like little uh pitching staff challenge kind of thing uh, i think that'd be better but yeah the k's yeah. and um i mean depending on if you know i have an innings limit or whatever um you know, i want to hit that but uh yeah the k's and you know, stuff like that. I'm not not really worried about. Um, I think that that stuff will just fall into place. So uh, okay. to me, it's just just being healthy and and uh, making every start. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. And I just wanted to ask you, Sean, the wrap up, just two, you know, kind of questions, you know, related to baseball in some ways, but also not. For you, I mean, going through, you know, the six month grind, as Nick said before, you know, talking about, you know, having the travel and, you know, sometimes, you know, with the time differences, you know, it gets tough, you know, especially probably in the dog days of July and August. But for you, I mean, stepping away from the game, you know, now being in the off season, anything you do outside of baseball to kind of clear your mind, whether, you know, video games, I know a lot of guys, you know, hunt for you. I mean, is there anything specific that you kind of lean towards in the off season? Yeah, I love traveling. Um, okay. I just got back from Asia, uh, went out wow. there by myself and it was awesome. Um, uh, just kind of got lost out there and, um, experienced some different cultures. Um, really just want to see the world, you know? And to me, that's like, it's like therapy is just, uh, going out to a different part of the world and, and, uh, just experiencing all that. Cause, um, yeah, you know, we only got a, a certain, certain amount of time in this world and and uh i think being able to to see different how, how different cultures are and uh, doing all that is uh is awesome and uh, yeah that's i love doing that love traveling within the within the states going seeing friends going see uh, different parts of the states i've never seen before and uh you know especially going out outside the country and uh, you know just getting that that passport filled up so um yeah definitely traveling is a uh, is a lot of fun and i think that's you know honestly is what has helped me the uh, past year. I mean, obviously, I didn't travel that much uh, this past year, but uh, I think it's it's helping is uh, being able to travel and like learning how to deal with that. Cool, cool. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, wrap up question. Uh, we kind of lean towards this question uh, at the end of most interviews. For you, you know, pitching, you know, whether in you know any level thus far, who's been the one guy that you feel that's had your number? Whether it's you know when you see them walking up to the plate, you know, you just kind of know that they're going to give you a fight, you know, regardless of what stuff you have that day? Uh, a couple guys. Uh, Shinsu Chu. Uh, okay. He's like one of the few lefties that, um, you know, gives me a hard time, I feel like. Uh, yeah. Garama Heredia, uh, when he was playing with the Mariners, I faced him a lot. And, okay. Uh, for some reason, he, he had my had my number. And then uh, Nelson Cruz, you know, he's a... Uh, yeah, Tim boomstick. Steps into the box, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, he, he has that uh, nickname for a reason. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd say those three guys off the top of my head are uh, a little, uh, you know, leave me scratch my head after I uh, you know, face them. But uh, and then obviously like Trout, um, yeah, you know, I face him a lot, and it's uh, he's uh, he's you know, <laughs> he, yeah, he's it. He's yeah, like Trout. Trout. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, so, you know, thanks for coming on, Sean. You know, we appreciate, you know, the time. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, being in the off season, you know, you had a chance to come on, so we appreciate that. You know, we look forward to, you know, seeing what you do in 2020. And just, you know, thanks for coming on and giving us your time. I know you're with your family right now, so we just really appreciate it. Of course, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so thanks, yeah, enjoy Sean. Enjoy the holidays. Yeah, enjoy the holidays and, you know, hope to talk soon and, you know, see what you do in 2020. Awesome. You, yeah, take care, guys, and uh, happy holidays to you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. I guess. So. Yeah, so that was Sean Manaya of the Oakland Athletics starting pitcher. Uh, probably projected, I would say personally, to be the opening day starter for the Athletics. So, you know, thanks for listening to us uh, as we wrap up this cool segment with Sean. Uh, thanks for Nick for coming on, uh, helping out with the podcast. And, you know, thanks for listening to us and click that uh, subscribe button and, you know, keep on watching. Thanks.